welcome back to Will Count. Tonight's daily digit is 87 million. That's the number of hours it will take to process the paperwork. We all love paperwork. Tied to all the regulations this administration added last year. Thanks, Obama, for the $216 billion worth of new rules. That's according to the American Action Forum. Now, think about that. 87 million hours processing regulatory paperwork. I guess we will create jobs somewhere. Now, the indebtor-in-chief is at it again when it comes to wanting executive authority over raising our nation's debt ceiling, forgetting that he has no authority whatsoever in Article 2 of the Constitution. But here's Obama's shockingly unoriginal idea when it comes to adding more debt. It revolves around giving him more power. Now, if the House and the Senate want to give me the authority so that they don't have to take these tough votes, uh, if they want to put the responsibility on me to raise the debt ceiling, I'm happy to take it. Sure, I'll spend all the money I can. Obama also warned the Republicans of throwing the economy off the cliff if they didn't agree to his demands. You want to talk about creating the perpetual crisis with our debt? This is exactly what the president and progressives are trying to do. Create a never-ending threat that only the president says he can fix, and he's been so good at fixing all the other problems, why not hand him this power? I mean, why not let him wrangle away power from Congress? This goes hand in hand with Rahm Emanuel's never letting a crisis go to waste. But here's the thing, while the president is pushing for more control over our debt, Washington, Republicans included, are missing the real problem, inflation. What do you think happens every time we raise the debt ceiling? We make room for the president's next spending binge by creating more money to pay for it. And what do you think that does to the value of your dollar, whether the ones you've earned or the ones you're going to earn when we keep adding more money to the money supply? Just look at the prices of everyday items that you buy because there is a huge difference between how government rates inflation and the effects of real inflation. When Obama first took office, gas was $1.79 a gallon. Today, three thirty, dollars And that's with it going down. Up 83% from his first inauguration. How about the things you buy at the grocery store? Ground beef, up 24%. Ice cream? Who doesn't love ice cream? You're paying 20% more for a gallon of ice cream under Obama. And those are just everyday products that you buy when you go shopping. And don't forget about big things like uh, health care. You're going to be required to buy that under Obamacare and premiums have gone up three grand since January 2009. And it hasn't, Obamacare hasn't even been fully implemented. My next guest breaks down all the numbers in his new report on inflation. Let me welcome friend of the program, Ed Butowski, founder of Chapwood Investments. Um, Huh. <laughs> Adding money to the money supply, it sounds so good to some people, well, why can't we just make more money? Right. Well, we can, but we can't make more money without the effect of making more money, which is each dollar in circulation is worth less than it was prior to the inflationary policy. Right. I mean, people don't really connect the fiscal dots. I mean, the reality is that when you... Well, the people money, watching this program do. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. But most Maybe people out cousins. there, most people out there don't really understand that when you print more money, it makes the value of the currency or the money you already have worth less. It buys less. So what happens also is the government has this number out called the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. We all know it. And, and we see that entitlement programs are tied to that. But what else is tied to that, which which is so diabolical are the raises that everybody gets. So everyone needs to take a step back and say, wait a second, you mean to tell me that the cost of my goods and services have only gone up 2% a year? And everyone knows that's not true. All right. So what I did is I went out and I created my own index because I was so tired of hearing people say inflation is only growing at this number and only growing at that number. So a couple of years ago, I emailed all my friends, not many of them, right? Uh, but uh, I should say not. It's lonely at the top. Right. It's kind of lonely up there. But uh, I emailed everybody and I said, send me a list of all the items that you spend money on. So I got about 4,000 items and I broke it down to the ones that appeared the most. So I took 500 items and I've been tracking them without any of the bias that the CPI has without any of the manipulation, just dollar for dollar, and then I broke it down by city. 
And what it really comes down to, it's called the Chapwood Index, but what it comes down to is that your cost to maintain a constant standard of living the year before, compared to the year before, averages about 10%, but the government says two. So when somebody gets a raise of about three or 4% on, you know, from year over year, they really just got spit on by about 6%. Their cost of living or their quality of you know, maintaining the same standard of living drops 6%. That is what's happening. So when we go back to the debt ceiling, and when you raise the debt ceiling, you print more money. So everyone needs to know this matters to them because their the cost of living to them just got tougher by the debt ceiling being raised. You know, it's funny. The first, first time in a long time, platinum is, and I don't know if it's because they were talking about this trillion dollar platinum coin, is all of right. a sudden more expensive than gold. I'm just throwing that out there because when, we, when I heard them talk about the platinum coin idea, and by the way, um, Speaking of inflated currency, right? My uh, make sure I get some some of that in the, uh, in the swear jar, or else I'm right. gonna get in trouble with the boss man. Um, when they were talking about this platinum coin idea, I, I I remember people thinking this was absurd, and you 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 heard even progressive economists saying, "Well, oh, no, this is a great idea because it'll be able to point to value." I'm like, "Oh, so you're talking about fixed money again? Mm -hmm. Because if there is fixed money, yeah. then you can't just manufacture money." That for better, when they say, well, if we went back to the gold standard, you know, prices were, you know, uh, wages would crash, but prices would crash. When yeah. we talk about inflation, when we talk about those products that you buy at the supermarket, wherever along the supply chain the inflation affects, it affects the rest of the supply chain. So if we're talking about uh, ice cream and ground beef, well, yeah. that's shipped in a truck, gas prices go up. Mm -hmm. The drivers pass that off to the wholesalers and the retailers and so forth. There's no such thing as a government effect on an organic economy that isn't po a pollutant. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. I mean, this started in 1983 under Reagan. What happened was inflation was about 12% a year. And Reagan looked at that, or his administration, I remember speaking to Ed Rollins about this, and I said to him, I said, you know, you guys started changing the way you calculate inflation. He goes, we absolutely did. We did that so we didn't have to pay out as much more in entitlement programs. Well, that's when it began. So they dropped the amount of money that they had to pay out. This happened again under the Boskin Commission, or in the Boskin Commission, under Clinton. Clinton. But the manipulation of the CPI is something that has continued to happen. And recently they started talking about it. We're going to hear about this in the next couple of months about changing the way they calculate chained inflation. Okay? And what that, what that means is if they change the way they calculate inflation again, they'll slow down the amount of money that they have to pay out in entitlement programs. This is actually a Republican idea. It's a horrible idea. And everybody needs to get up in arms about this because that miscalculation, that biased number is destroyed our economy. That's why, Andrew, most people are reliant on entitlement programs. Nobody wakes up and says, I want to rely on entitlement programs. They did everything they were supposed to do. They followed all the rules. They paid their taxes, but their cost of living outpaced what their raises were. And now the fight is, here you have currency or wages that you earned. It went to Social Security. Somewhere in the Johnson administration, it no longer became your bank account. It just went into the general fund. That's right. The currency got inflated. You can't get that money out until the government gives it to you, and then they give you what's called a cost of living adjustment. That's right. So they're inflating the currency, devaluing the, the currency, and now you're fighting over an increase of dollars just to get back, back to that inflated currency, and you can't get Never the DeLorean get and go back and be young again and say, hey, maybe this would be a good idea in the future. It's, it's sad, that, and, and you see this on the international stage. I don't, I, I, we have to wrap up in just a second. I was moved by that Brazilian finance manager who said, wait a second, you guys are going to do this QE3, but you want to buy our oil. Mm -hmm. We're not going to sell you a barrel of oil on Monday for an agreed upon price for you to devalue the currency on Tuesday. You got the oil and we've got a, a worth less currency. That's not fair. Everyone's picking up on it, including the Chinese. As soon as the Chinese walk away, as soon as the OPEC nations walk away, you're going to see the demand for our bonds disappear. And right. as a result of that, our rate is going to go higher. What's going to happen then? Print more money. We are on a one-way course to absolute financial insolvency in this country. And raising the debt ceiling, most people just drive by and hear the thoughts and go, oh, yeah, raise the debt ceiling. They don't understand what it means to them personally. They've got to wake up and start demanding more from the government and reduce our spending. Because guess what? Purchasing power is under assault. We're being ambushed right now by the policies of this administration administration and past administrations, uh -huh. but we, right now it's never been worse than it is today. I can't wait to be greased. Thanks, Ed. We'll have you back.